What's up, people? Mark Jackson here from the Mark Jackson Show. Welcome. We're about to go in depth with my man King Saladin for part two of the interview. You see where I'm standing? I'm standing amongst greatness. Can he take me one on one? I don't know. We might find out later. Come join us. What's up, people? Big Mark Jackson here from The Mark Jackson Show. We are here for part two for my interview with the famous... Stop it. You know the guy, King Saladin. What's up, brother? What's How up, you doing? man? How you doing, I'm man? I'm blessed, brother. Thank Welcome. you for having me again. Welcome to the studio. Hey, yes, sir. You know We're in your home now. Now we're going to get you in your, your livelihood talking about what you do. Yeah. So first, again, thank you for, for being not just a great artist, but thank you for being influential to so many people, oh, inspiring man. to so many people. Man, that's you know, your question. story... Plus, I hope we captured a lot on parts one, but mm -hmm. it does so much, not just for me, because I see another person from Philadelphia not just making it, but changing lives for others. We appreciate you for that, Wow, man. dog, thank you. My That's pleasure. a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to do it. So now that we're in your, we're in your craft, tell us about you know, your art. Tell us about um, this. So pretty much we're in the Philadelphia studio. I want to give a shout out to Arts and Craft Holdings for mm -hmm. allowing us to have this space for a nice amount of time. Incredible so, space. Yeah, so it's really, really cool. Um, we're working on a Philadelphia mural around the corner. On one of the buildings that he already owns. Where would that be? Where would that, that be? That would be on Six and Spring Garden, the old Palmers, the old yes. Palmers. Yes. So that was all. That was already crazy because me and my man JP used to go to Palmers. Yeah, we all did. And, yeah, right. <laughs> so um, he Palmers to, is an old club in Philadelphia, people. Just so you know. Yeah, and it was like really, really cool. Every floor had different music. It was yes. a different vibe. It was the only one in Philly like that. Yeah, it was crazy. The only one I ever been to. So um, to be able to put JP the Money Bear that rendition on that club after me and him partied there for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. That was like super crazy and organic already. Yeah. Um, so this space came about me wanting to have an event to celebrate the, uh, the mural getting put up on the wall in okay. Philadelphia. So I didn't expect it was going to be this big, but that's the blessing in it. You know, you never know. So um, well, we're here in Philly right now. So right now we just moved in for maybe a month ago. So it's still kind of like in shambles a little bit, things everywhere. A lot of these pieces on the wall are things that I created um, in 2020 during the pandemic. A lot of these bigger pieces, they were in my storage, so I actually got to let them breathe, you know, on okay. the walls and things like that. My other studio is a little bit, well, a lot smaller than this. But This is, this is great, though. This is great no, space, this is man. It's better too big, not too small. Yeah, this is definitely perfect, man. So we're able to have, like, host events and all kinds of cool stuff, do stuff like this, you know what I mean? Um, we got some of the products over here. Tell me about some of the products, please. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with the watch. Sorry, I don't have my watch on today. But um, this is the watch we released in 2020. It's a diver. It's um, totally, it's totally, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Independent. So we didn't okay. do a collab or anything like that. Really? It was like, yeah, we just got with the best watch people that we could find. And they put together this watch. It's a diver. You can go about 700 feet before it gets, act, starts acting crazy. It's a uh, skeleton. When I see it, it's JP the teddy bear on the back. Look at that. You know that. what I'm saying? It's got the skeleton, JP skeleton on there. Look at that. So. Look at that. Look at that. Make sure we get that right there. That's craftsmanship there. You know craftsmanship. what I'm saying? After buying a few watches, you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of like, you it's know like what? A, I need my own yeah, watch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Spend I like that. thousands of dollars on Rolex and all these other things. It's like. Everybody got that watch, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and nine times out of ten, when you buy a watch that's very expensive, nobody even asks about it because they kind of mm. already know, know or they're like, uh, whatever. Because they have it too. So when I wear that watch, I get way more conversation than any watch that I own. You know what I'm saying? Basically because it's mine and it's just a little bit different. You know, you see it, you look at it, you're like, damn, it's art inside of the whole bunch of stuff. So that was a really cool product. We sold out of that. We got a few left, a few left, but we sold out of the, the drop that we did. Okay. I keep, always keep some stuff to myself. And once again, on. even though we're going to talk about more products, tell me where they can they find us. Oh, on www.kingsaladin.com. And we'll um, have that on link to Yeah, yeah. So that's my website. Um, all our drops are very, very limited. I think it was 999 watches. Really? That went very well. Um, this is JP the Money Bear. Ooh. As most people know from my art, JP the Money Bear. JP is my best friend that passed away 2013 from brain cancer. Um, he's the one that really put the, the battery in my back, which we talked about. Yeah, on part one. On part yeah. one. So this is the first figure that we did. We flew to China. I did the blueprint. 
probably had to go back two, three times to get it right. Came out right. And back of you, it's the seven foot JP. Oh, wait, that's what I was trying to post up earlier. Yeah, okay. We, yeah, we, okay. We, got, we got that. We want. Yeah. So pretty much, this is just uh, just something to keep. Not something, but this is a, a, a inspiration of my best friend putting his energy into me and kind of getting me on my my way mm -hmm. to where I was supposed to go when I didn't even think, you know what I mean? I was supposed and to do we it. We spoke about that. We spoke about how sometimes people see something in you that you don't see in yourself. Definitely. And Definitely. sometimes you need that extra motivation from exterior sources mm -hmm. to motivate you from within. That's pretty big mm -hmm. time. Tell me about- Especially creators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me about, um, now you have, a, you have a bulldog, you have one for your son. Yeah. Tell me about this. Like, Okay, some... so this one right here is Teddy. So this is pretty much like the younger, the younger JP the Money Bear, but this okay. is inspired by my son. Okay. I had my first son, I had my first kid in 2017. Okay. So around that time, um, we were still dealing with people in China and things like that. And I wanted to put that like that inspiration into another toy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he's like more of like the Bart Simpson cool kid, you know what I'm saying? I got you. And, you know, all that type of inspiration. Um, I don't have the pwn here, which was my bulldog that okay. passed away. Um, we released that I think in 2021. And that's in the that same collab with these two. Yeah, same same uh, toy program and everything. So 427 on the back, if people see it, and they're like, what's 427? Because as you put that on everything, I And I put this yeah. on here, I put this in the back of the shoe. So this is my grandmother's birthday. You know uh -huh, what I mean? Okay. So my grandmother also passed away from cancer in 2017. So I've had all these crazy ups and downs in the midst of me trying to figure out what I was supposed to do. So instead of like, kind of like, not telling that story, mm -hmm. I kind of put that story into there because these are the people that was like pushing me to do what I needed to do okay. before all of this stuff happened. You know what I mean? So I got to tie them to these products. You know what I'm saying? Makes sense. It's coming from uh, inspiration, comes from within, comes from your family. That's pretty cool. Tell me about definitely. the project in Germany you did with the shoes. Okay. So shout out to Flowers to Society, um, a major, major shoe company in Germany and over in Europe. Um, we released the first, my, my first all independent shoe. This is like you with, did another one before. I've done I've done a Nike Air Max and we've done a Diodors that are actually over there. Um, that went pretty good, but okay. this was it was something about this one that was more of a situation where it was like I wanted my team to be a part of it. I didn't okay. want to just do something with an artist fee or you know because over time I'm doing all these different things. I'm doing all this different business and I'm like seeing the behind the scenes of it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I'm like I need to be a part of the behind the scenes to really be a businessman, you know what I'm yes. saying? Other than just an artist. So um, this is the first shoe. We dropped this in, I think we dropped this October, November-ish. November and it went really well. We sold out in Germany. We uh, how many did y'all make of those? A thousand shoes. Because I seen the, I seen when the, the grand launch of it, mm -hmm. and I seen the reception you got in Germany, mm -hmm. and it was bananas. It was yeah, bananas. it was crazy. I was trying to pull that over to America, uh -huh. but it was just a little bit different, you know, budgets and things like that. So. We were still going to work on doing a, um, a Philadelphia. Uh, I was actually going to do it at Lapstone. Okay. So me and Brian was talking and things like that, but it was a, just the a business on just trying to get all these shoes to America. It was thousands of dollars, bro, yeah. before you sell a shoe. So that knowing that, it helped me learn for the next situation. Yeah. How do we, where do we put these things? Where do we land all this stuff? You know what I'm saying? So um, this was amazing. Now, how did you come up with the design on this shoe? So actually, the design on the shoe was my first painting that I sold at Phillips Auction House. So yeah, so 2020, I was uh, invited to this like crazy art show um, with all the greats. It's like Calls, uh, Fatora. I can keep going, right? All these amazing guys, and um, I was like the youngest person in the show. So one of those pieces sold, and it was this. It was one of my abstract pieces. So when I did my next product, I was like, damn, that felt so good to be able to sell at an auction house like that. You know right. what I mean? And for me to be a part of it. Forget selling the painting, you know what I'm saying? For me to be a part of the show yeah. was just like epic, you know what I mean? So for me to be able to sell that painting, I got that painting scanned before I sold it. So now we can use the artwork on anything. I could do it on hoodies, I can do it on, I could wrap this whole building in this artwork if I want. Just like all the other paintings I do too, we get them scanned. Okay. We can always forever use the art, you know what I mean, after they sold. So this was the piece. So the art will last even after we go on. Yep. So, this is the piece that I picked to use on the shoe. You see the King Salad thing. You see the signature. Y'all see the signature right there. You know, you got to make sure you had it on it. And you, you see the to. 427. Mm -hmm. Represent as always. Got to represent grandma and the dream big. You know is. what I'm saying? So you can look that on your feet. Like, yo, I got to get it going, man. You know, I, I do have one beef to pick with him because they, they don't make it a size 15. Listen. You know, so listen. I, first thing as soon as I seen it, I was like, well, how can I get 15? Like, 
It's not, a, it's not a lot of guys in Germany <laughs> with 15, 16. Germany got some big people too. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. They do. And it's so crazy because I got homies that wear, they're not even as tall as you, and they wear 15s. And they like, yeah. bro, I just hate when you come out with sneakers and I can't <laughs> never get them. Good look up so, for the big feet people, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's a whole nother last. But now the next shoe, I'll make sure that we go up to a 17, 16, 17. You know what ah, I mean? Just okay. because of how much flack I'm getting for not having shoes for y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's going to be really, really cool, man. It's a learning process. Perfect. So King, tell us about this piece, brother. Um, so this piece right here, um, I created this, I think, in like 2000, 2000, maybe 20, like 20. So this was a piece that's a little bit different than all these other pieces that you see. A lot of these are JP the Money Bear, and okay. it was like, um, that's like my Nike sign. That's like my iconic, that's what everybody knows me from. Yes. But a lot of these pieces right here, this was at the show, um, No Middle Class. You came to the show, yep. the one in um, Fishtown, right? Yep. So this is called One of Three. So this is pretty much like me and my homies growing up in the inner city. I wanted to make sure I put the city in the background, and one of us is probably going to make it really? out of the three of us hanging together. Oh, I see there. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, this was me and my friends, you know what I'm saying? So I would be the one in the middle. I was a little bit different, you know. Yeah. I played basketball. A lot of them played basketball, but they didn't play for teams and things like that. They, you know, at the park, they yeah. always playing, but it's like they didn't have that guidance that, that kind of like that structure that basketball mm -hmm. brings gives to you. your life. Yeah, and yeah. you know what I'm saying? So these two friends passed away or went to jail, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And it's like I wanted to kind of put that, it could have been more of two, you know what I'm saying? Because I just put one of three. Because most of the time you had like three, like two, yeah. like good homies. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And both of my good homies passed away. JP and another one of my homies, Fats. I could put a bunch of names there. You and know what I'm saying? And the crazy part about that, unfortunately, we grew up in the inner city like you and I have. Mm -hmm. This is our life. It's Not all it of us make it to see 18. Nah. So it represents, it represents that, reality. And now it's even worse because kids are really yeah. killing kids. So kids and that's are dying the problem. at 14, 12. It's crazy. So I wanted to put this piece out there to just get that story out and okay. show another like lane of my art. Yo, yes, sir. Oh, coming by. Oh, here we go. I like this one. This is JP again, Money Bear again. Yeah. Tell about so this piece right here, I think I did this in 2000, I think 20 as well. Like when we stuck, we stuck in the pandemic, yeah. bro, I was going crazy. <laughs> my man Berto, my man Berto, he actually builds these canvases. So okay. he was like, yo, we just got to go big. Because I was buying everything from, you know, like regular art stores that would be like, the biggest size would maybe be like a 60 by 60, which is, what would that be? Like uh, five, four by four, five by okay. five. So this right here, I think is like a... Probably like a six yeah. by six or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So um, this piece right here is called Crypto, Crypto versus Cash, right? Crypto so, versus Cash. Mm -hmm. okay. So in the midst of me painting this piece, we was working on our first NFT project. So I was learning about crypto. I was learning about all these different, you know, all these different worlds that they don't teach us in the hood. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? We thought cash was king. It's not. You know what okay. I mean? So um, in the midst of that, I wanted to show that I wanted to kind of just educate people on crypto versus cash. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the cash that I've had, it goes so fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the Ethereum and all that different stuff yep. that I accumulated, it just goes up. Sometimes it goes down, but it's, 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 like, it's like holding. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like a different financial situation that you can kind of build on. You know what I mean? So you know, diverse, diverse part of your portfolio. Yeah, and then right here is for the love, for the love of the craft. You know what I'm saying? So it's, the, it's, the, it's actually the financial breakdown of America right now. That's why I made the money sign breaking apart. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And then the love over here. So it's kind of like, there's a whole lot going on in this. And we actually released a print of this last year that sold out too. Really? Yeah. So a lot of these pieces are too big for everybody's house. You know what I'm saying? Or unless it's a museum or it's less it's going in a gallery of certain space. So I usually do prints where I was talking about uh, laser print, la yes. not uh, scanning everything. So I can make this the size of your, for your house. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Because the print was a 36 by 36, okay. which is probably this yeah. area. You yeah. know what I mean? So this is one of my favorites, though, honestly. Okay. Come on. Now, he, uh, Bertha was telling me about how this came to This was crazy. This so is this, this is a whole story, right? Um, one of my collectors, shout out to Preston, right? Preston Chang. He's like one of my first collectors. He's owned about five, like five or six pieces, right? So he's a big real estate guy, and he's like, he wanted to take me, well, he actually picked his favorite three artists and told us to pick, in the midst of the pandemic, though, tell us to pick three places, any place in the world that, he, that we want to go and go create. So at that time, I'm like, damn, I would love to go to this place and that place, exactly. the Middle East but and shit like that. But it was the pandemic, yeah. But it was the pandemic, so 
and it was a situation where like you flew certain places, you couldn't get back if something. Yeah. I was like, no, we got to stay in America, right? So we we researched where like some of these amazing places was. So this was pretty much the Sequoia, the Sequoia National Park. Yeah. We picked the, the Sequoia National Park to go to. Found the crazy ass house. We did video. It was like a house in the middle of the like the woods, bro. It was okay. like so crazy. So, so you've and, seen the redwoods up close and personal. Yeah, and we also <laughs> drove to the top of the mountain, which was really? like probably like twenty something thousand feet. My man Big J drove us up there, got us up there safe. I was scared as shit. <laughs> Every day he was like, "Yo, we gotta go back up there and get videos." I was like, "Look, I'm gonna go one time, and then we get as much shit as we can, bro." <laughs> and we're not going back, bro. The mountain was literally no guardrail. Yeah. And it's snow everywhere. So it's like, it, yeah, we're, it's in, 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 um, in San, no, where is it at? Right outside the bay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right so it's in bay. Fresno, Fresno. Yeah. But when you go up the mountain, it's like snow. It's like Chicago. Yeah. Bro, it's crazy. So this piece came from us getting to experience the outdoors. I had to put the sequoia trees because I've never seen nothing that big, like a sequoia tree. You ever seen a sequoia oh, tree? Oh, I've been there. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> you, are, so you already know, and it feels like leather. Yeah. It's like... It don't seem real. It don't seem real. So, First time I went, I, I was like, literally asking myself, this can't be real. Facts. And my buddy's like, you looking at it like, oh, this can't be real. Nah. He's like, but you're looking at it. I'm like, <laughs> all right, you're right. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, this, so this is the piece that came from that inspiration. Yeah. Um, this is another one that's crazy. So I released this in 2020 as sure. well. So everything was, two th 2020 was like a real crazy year of me like creating because we were stuck in the studio. Mm -hmm. It was like. We had a lot of work to do. I was working with the Tops Project and things like yeah. that. So it was like, we was busy as hell. And we was just like having as much fun as we could. So this piece is called Breaking Old Habits. So it's, that's why it's breaking up and it's like all in shambles kind of, but it's together. Um, breaking Old Habits was pretty much based on being in a pandemic as well. You know what I'm saying? It was just like in the midst of the pandemic, you had to, e you was either going to be like, I was looking at it like, okay, you could have fell to like, depression mm -hmm. because of it or Probably you could have been have. super motivated you know what i'm saying and like understand that this is a time in the world where um it's definitely going to be better but right now it's just like in shambles nobody oh, knows what's going yeah. on covid people was like oh you can't get too close and you can't come in and you know don't be around your older family it was yeah. crazy so i just felt like i was all over the place but i used that to create so breaking old habits was how i felt at that time that was pretty cool and this one i think i created this in 2022 2020 was a this crazy family, year. So this is my family. This was my family. So this would be me, of course. Mm -hmm. This is my son, as I made as the yep. toy. This is my daughter, and this is my wife. So, you know, this is the first family piece that I have ever ever did. And once I actually did this piece, I got like probably four or five like commission orders of really? people that had families. Like, bro, I don't have a daughter, but I got two sons. Can you do it with me, my wife, and my two sons? And really? it was crazy, bro. So this was really, really cool. And we were just talking to your guy from Australia. Yeah. So a family from Australia got one of these pieces. They flew down to my other studio, commissioned it. It was crazy, bro. So this piece right here means a lot to me just based on family. And you know where we come from. Yeah. It's not always a dad in the house. It's right not always that. a good, solid foundation. So for me to be able to come from an unsolid foundation and kind of get my life together through art and dreaming, I had to create through that, you know what I mean, a little bit, so. Okay, so David Mugetta, shout out to David, right? So David Mugetta is the biggest NFL, a black NFL agent. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He got everybody, everybody's under him, right? So he's one of the people that actually um, commissioned me commissioned as well. Him. Yeah, so as soon as you walk into his house, it's like crazy. It's like really? right there. That's like such a big honor, bro. So that's, that's the vibe behind that one. This one right here, I think I created this maybe like 2021. I just wanted to basically just like show love to my mom. You know what I mean? Because my mom is like, like everything to me, bro. And um, number one fan, playing basketball, whatever I wanted to do, she was like pom-poms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I just wanted to be- Inspiration, I like that. So this one is called, uh, damn. Dear Mama, sorry. Dear Mama, um, I had to put the number one Mom, little pendant on her, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It was just like a reflection of like, when you grow up, sometimes you kind of like, you get a girlfriend, you do all this other stuff, you might call your mom sometimes, yeah. but that ain't me, that's not me. I call my mom every day for like, since I've been able to have my own phone and not be in her house, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To just make sure she cool and just make sure, you know, like now that I got kids, I understand like, 
you put all this work in for your kids, then they grow up and they don't call you like that or yeah. something. It's like, <laughs> I would really feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know, and a lot of my friends lost their mothers too also. So I wanted to put that as just like a remembrance of like, your mom is everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, your dad is also everything too, but a lot of us haven't, lot you know, didn't grow happened. with our dads and things yep. like that. So my mom is like- grandmothers are so important. So important. Yep. So you know, my grandmama's on my shoe, my grandma's here, I got my mom. It's like, so this piece was really, really cool. Um, I haven't even shown this yet. Like nobody's really? ever, I didn't, never posted it or nothing. It's really? just like one of those pieces oh. where it's like. We're going to get this right here. Yeah, I mean. Breaking you know out right here. <laughs> so it was just one of those pieces that was in my storage that I was just working on all these pieces. And I'm like, I get this space and I'm like, damn, I need to put this here. I need to put this here. But going back so to this that. real quick, just spend a second on this. Like, so mm -hmm. like you spoke, we both like, we, we mentioned before from in the season of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And like I said, a lot of times father's words in, in a lot of see kid, kids' lives. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately. Our mo unfortunately, our mothers, our grandmothers, like my, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother. So like, mm -hmm. like I feel you in this. And I think a lot of people relate to this. Yeah, from, definitely. From every area. So definitely relatable. Time. Definitely, man. And I still call my mom every day. <laughs> Boy, you better. You better. What's about this um, one? This one's not really done, but this, okay. is a, this is a work on wood. Okay. Um, this is actually built. By Alberto Chavez. Okay. So this is my my studio hand. This is my guy. Um, he does. I call him my my my, uh, my army Swiss knife, right? <laughs> he he pretty much can do everything, right? So this came in the pandemic. We did our first one in the pandemic. I sold probably like ten of these, but not this big. They was like maybe 30, 40 by forties or something okay. like this. Is like really big, but um, and not done as well. So. We wanted to do something that was like 3D. I was like on some 3D vibe, you know what I mean? I'm like, bro, what can we do 3D? He's like, bro, I can build it. And I'm like, what you mean build it? He was like, like by wood. And so we went out, I got saws, I got everything he needed, right? We at home deep Anybody every kept day. fingers in the process? Yeah, I ain't getting near it. I let him do his thing. So, um, so we pretty much, he just, we, we designed it out. He get it down to the certain, the right angles, down to the eyes where he did those by hand. like by hand. It looks like you bought those from somewhere, like the yeah. circles and the eyes, the money signs and everything. So um, that's, a, that's a, a situation that we just working on right now, whatever. Nice. Um, this piece right sneaker here. Con, right? Yeah, so this was the first sneaker con in Philly, okay. and I was like the premier artist for it, and they made this big thing, so they let me keep it. So I just bought it here, <laughs> pretty Shout much, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to sneaker con. Um, this piece right here was also at the show. I remember this one, yep. Yeah, so this one is City on Fire. And this was just pretty look much just like me feeling yeah, look at like, yeah. Like, I, 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 it, was the, it, was, it was in the midst of the pandemic again. 2020, I was having so many different thoughts, so many different ideas. It was like crazy, man. So this was one of the things where I felt like I had to do this piece. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had so many friends mass incarcerated. I had so many friends that passed away before they were supposed to. Um, Inflation was crazy at the time, not as crazy as it is now, but <laughs> it was crazy. It was at an all time high in 2020. You know what I'm saying? My city, Philadelphia, which is a beautiful city. So I didn't want to put it like the whole city fucked up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just the way of the world and just no opportunity that we need for real, for real, for everybody to grow. But everybody here is like super special in their own way. You know what I mean? So um, we put in there no school, social media, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the fight for attention. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, just a lot of things that when I grew up, it, it, you didn't even really like taking pictures. It was exactly. like, come on, guys, get together for a picture. You're like, oh, God. Miserable. Look miserable. Now yeah. it's like you got to, you live by pictures. It's yeah. like, it's like kind of weird. But this is one of the pieces that really, really stuck to me. I think I'm going to release a print to this. Okay. Um, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Kids killing kids. I, I actually put all my friends that pet, not all my friends, but my, my main friends that passed away on these tombstones. On the tombstones. Wow. So that was like super, super. Super um, close to my heart. So, um, I mean, before, before, look, I mean, let's talk about the sweatshirt. I mean, uh, okay. you, wear, you wear your brand. I love it. You yeah. represent your brand at all times. The hat and yeah. brand. Tell me, tell me about the sweatshirt. So, these, so this sweatshirt is a rendition of that oh, piece, that's, that's that that piece right there. Yeah, so um, I'm working with a company in Paris right now. Okay. And they do, like, like, the most authentic prints. And they work with every, like, real serious artist. So this piece right here... It's called Diamond in the Rough. So JP the Money Bear, just a different rendition of it. The first piece I ever did with Diamond Dust, um, I went to California to actually get this Diamond Dust because they don't sell it over here. It's really? some art stuff, man. But it's crazy. And shout out to my man, um, and shout out to my man Aaron for finding it for me. Um, this piece is just pretty much one of my only black and white bears ever. I did a few, but they was commissioned. So it wasn't, it's like nobody 
has a black and white bear because all of these different ones that were prints, yeah. you see how colorful they are and how different they are than this. So this is the one that I wanted to release. Uh, we're supposed to release it this month, but I think it's going to be probably like February. You know what I mean? Because okay. there's a lot going on. I, I hate rushing stuff. Yep. So um, this piece, I knew it was so perfect. It was so dope that I was like, yo, we got to do some merch for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I need everybody to have a piece of this and be able to like enjoy some of the stuff that I'm working on. And then people kill me about merch all the time. So it's like, hey, when you releasing another hoodie, we need hoodies, last drop, I couldn't get it. You only released 100, it went in five minutes, this isn't that. So um, we released a few more um, this time and we're releasing them on Friday, so. Releasing this, this one on Friday? Yeah, this hoodie on Friday, www.kingsaladin. Boom. So first I wanna say shout out to the Mural Arts, Philadelphia, you know what I mean? I've always wanted to work with Mural Arts, okay. but you know you gotta kinda be like, go through the art school ranks and things like that yeah. to even like get on their radar, okay. you know? So growing up in Philly, which has the most murals in the country, actually. Um, really? Well, definitely, it's the mural capital of the country, Philadelphia. Didn't know that. Yeah, so. You um, learned something here. <laughs> <laughs> so so just going, to, just going different places in the city, you always see a different vibe. Like you come to North Philly, you know what I'm saying? You got murals that you've never seen before. You yeah. go down the bottom, it's different murals. It's Patti LaBelle. I just actually just rolled past the uh, Julius Irvin one. Yes, you that was in it since I was a little kid. And that's the first mural that was actually done on this transfer paper. So you really? don't even know that that's like this crazy paper that's laid on the wall after the artist kind of like does their thing. You really? think it's a mural, you out there all night and you all day. So they came up with this amazing situation that this is called um, parachute paper. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. This is called parachute paper. So pretty much, um, this is just a part of the head. We got like 150 more of these and they're all in five by fives. So you color them by like, almost color by number. And really? then you put them all together. And then they got a team of people that kind of like do whatever they do to get them all on the wall. It's so, crazy. Mural, the mural arts is like, look. yeah, with the lift, I had to get, <laughs> I had to get lift certified. Where are you to the lift, people? <laughs> Facts. I had to get lift certified. Uh, that was a crazy day. But it was just like, the whole process of just getting all this stuff done was amazing, which led us to this space. Because the space was, was really supposed to be used for me to just do these here. Because I could work on these at my studio, but I would have to like almost not have anything going on because I would uh -huh. have to lay all this stuff out. Because if I lay it out, it's probably from here, it's 60 feet. Oh wow. So it's probably okay. from here to down there, you know what I'm saying? So this is the piece that we're working on. We got a bunch of other pieces, they all rolled up over there. Okay. And that's pretty much what we're doing over here. Um, Cool. Brotherly love. Yes, sir. And Jay, and Jay, here get the thing. It'll be cool. And we got we got the art on the basketballs too. We got oh, yeah, the yeah, art yeah. in the basketballs. So so this is my this is my first this is my second series art basketball. This is from the black and white piece that I was I didn't show you. I was just showing okay. your lady friend. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I wanted to put that on a basketball, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Because it's full circle. Like my life That's where it started. started with basketball. That's well, where it started. I always did art. But in the hood, you over 5'11", they're going to make <laughs> you play ball. They're going to make you play ball. And then I got to love to, love to play basketball, um, learned so many things from playing basketball, traveled out of Philadelphia my first time with AAU, yeah. and that changed my whole, my whole everything. First time with the Miami, I seen a palm tree. I'm like, so when I come back home, I'm like, I'm, I know this isn't just it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So basketball exactly. was that thing that was like, took me outside of the hood to get my vision and just like be able to see more. Okay. So I always want to refer back to basketball. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because started, basketball brother. just wasn't a sport. It was like one of these things that made me not how one of my friends might have passed away or took a wrong direction or something like mm -hmm. that. That's the one thing that kept me like, nah, I'm going to have to answer to my mom. My grandma. <laughs> and you know, back then, the people out in the community used to be your parents too. So Definitely. like you know, the adult, the elders then. Definitely. See, every, a lot of people and, every, accountable. And, and you play ball, they never let you hang with the wrong people. There you go. You walking outside, you with the, you know, the guy who be robbing, mm -hmm. they like, yeah, bro, don't be with him, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yep. that was like a real, real special moment in time. Because I don't know if that happens now. It might, but not like when not we like were like younger, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. Yeah, this let's is the go. Second, let's this is the second thing. basketball. Mark, you already know what to do with that. I mean, you know I, mean? I mean, you the guy, though. No, you the no, guy, bro. no, you was in the A. You went to the A. Let's not, let's not play around, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I scored some baskets and things like that. But so you, you know my guy, King, you know he got a hoop. You know how we do it. You know he going to do it. This is Philly. It's a basketball team. You got to, man. And when you look at it, you say you got you to gotta make a shot. You got to, hold on, to make a shot, 
you got to take a shot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's lie, eh? full, just full circle life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So let's see. Let's see how this go. Hold on one second. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there you have it. The famous artist King Saladin, but it started here. He has created a lot of great people, and he's not the exception. King Saladin, out. No.